there is some glass wall that is preventing the Epstein story from being discussed properly. Everyone's interested in it, the questions are basic, and there's a guaranteed story to write. Simply ask the most basic questions of the officials involved and print whatever comes back. Whatever it is, there's no possibility of an uninteresting answer to the central questions. And yet, the central questions are not asked. And what are those central questions? The first one is very simple. You have to ask every government that might be involved, was Jeffrey Epstein known to be attached to any intelligence agency anywhere in the world? Then you have to ask, were his file activities known to the intelligence agencies? And was there any kind of tacit approval or understanding? Or is there a categorical denial that such techniques may never be used? Now, we have not recorded the no comments or we don't discuss sources and methods. That's typical in these stories where you should be able to say, can't I at least get a statement that we would never condone all activities to be used for intelligence gathering purposes? All right. The next question, Jeffrey Epstein was supposed to be a hedge fund manager of some kind, and he had extensive offices at a place called Villard House, the former uh, Helmsley Palace. This trophy building is a place that I myself dropped off materials for Jeffrey Epstein to review in connection to a hedge fund matter. What I want to know is, where are the trading records from Villard House? It would be almost impossible to go back in time and fake trading records for a billion dollar plus hedge fund. And yet nobody seems to have ever recorded a trade with Jeffrey Epstein. We don't know where he did prime brokerage. There are no financial records that explain his fortune. Are those publicly available or should those be publicly available? I don't even care about that. Where are the records? If, if there are no records, I mean, presumably this person paid taxes. Presumably this person had to make SEC filings. I don't know. But the key issue is, I don't think there was a hedge fund. When I met Jeffrey Epstein, uh, which might have been something like 2002, before he was uh, charged with sex crime violations in Florida, um, I did not believe that Jeffrey Epstein was a hedge fund manager. And I, in fact, called my uh, wife at the time, and I said, this man appears to be a construct. And she said, what do you mean by a construct? And I said, it, it's like they've hired an actor to play a hedge fund manager. But this person didn't behave like uh, the super rich normally behave. He didn't behave like a hedge fund manager behaved. He didn't have any of the substance that you would normally associate with people of that class. I'm not saying he wasn't smart, but he was glib. And he lived essentially like he was Gatsby. I only met him once. Uh, it was probably for about an hour or so. Um, but he was an absolutely terrifying person to encounter. It would be surprising to me if I was alone in that I immediately had the suspicion that I was looking at somebody who had been constructed rather than something that had organically arisen within the financial community. Further questions that need to be asked. Where was Ghislaine Maxwell's passport last cited? Assume that she has one or more passports and assume that governments record when passports go through a border point. Okay, we should at least be able to ascertain where was the last point where her passports, or at least one of her passports, were officially seen. I don't know of anybody asking this question. Can we not call up Interpol? Is there no sense in which we can guess where she was last located? Where, what was the last social event in which she was recorded? We don't seem to know anything about this person. Why are we not talking to Les Wexner? I don't understand why these people are not being interviewed or uh, deposed. We have a very strange situation. And in all of these cases, a simple declaration of no comment would be a newsworthy story. I mean, I'm hopeful. I mean, investigative journalism does take time. I'm hopeful that You've there are. You've got to be kidding. I, I really, I'm going to shut you down on this. It's been over six months. This doesn't take that long to get a no comment from the CIA. I'm not the talking NSA about the, the no State comment. Department. I'm not talking about the no comment. I'm, my point was going to be, I, given, given the amount of interest in the Epstein story, there must be some investigative journalists working on it. I completely agree with your points about the no comments. Like that, 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 not that is not of, being... I'm sorry. It's not a question of some investigative journalist. We, we tripped over some enormous structure. We don't know what this structure was. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. 
The, the fortune that I think I've seen referenced is something like $600 million. Who with $600 million would make these purchases? You know, multiple jet aircrafts, uh, private islands, um, you know, a townhouse uh, on 71st Street in Manhattan, a huge comp complex uh, in the New Mexico desert uh, property in Paris. It would appear that most of this was intended for display. I mean, in other words, the behavior patterns of Jeffrey Epstein suggest an 11 figure fortune, uh, maybe high 11 figure fortune. This person appears to be uh, somewhere in the nine figures. That's two orders of magnitude off. Now, I know that very rich is very rich to many people, but, you know, as a person of much, much smaller means, I can tell you that if you hang around with people who are in this stratosphere, they behave very differently depending upon which order of magnitude they're at. And Jeffrey Epstein was at the wrong order of magnitude. He was behaving like a high 11 figure type guy, maybe, with what appears to be a nine figure fortune. Yeah, I mean, my 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 point on this is that I don't I don't know where the media interest is, um, and it, it and it doesn't add up that there wouldn't be media interest given that the the huge desire for the story that you can kind of see every time you log on. Anything, any scrap is interesting to everybody. Yeah, especially given that we already know the links to someone like Prince Andrew, the British royal family. This is one of the biggest, potentially one of the biggest stories let's talk about, that has ever, has ever happened. Well, let's talk about the interview with Prince Andrew. What was that? Now, I cannot believe my ears when very intelligent people watch that interview in its entirety and then say, well, he was unprepared or uh, it was a mistake to grant that interview. I think that that's not true. I think we have no idea what that rep interview represented. I think that that interview was so bizarre and so clearly, it was almost like he was trolling the media who was asking him questions. Was he forced to give an interview and he decided that he would rather go down with the ship and give the world's worst interview? Was he realizing that he was completely trapped and that uh, his best strategy was to make fun of the entire process? Um, by giving answers that were so implausible that no child would ever believe them. Whatever that interview was, it was one of the most remarkable pieces of footage anybody has ever seen on television, bar none. To not be talking about this and say, we do not know what that interview represented. What was a member of the British royal family, the Queen's son, doing, giving that interview, was it in Buckingham Palace? Yes, I think it was. It was an insane event that happened where nobody came to a conclusion that makes that make any sense. I'd rather leave the problem open. Mm. Who was forced to do what by whom that that interview would ever be granted? Yeah, I can remember when it was first announced, having a sort of double take of like, this is not a good, this is not going to go well. And then the actual interview happened. That it was like I think incredible. it went brilliantly. Maybe. For us. For us. Right? It was effectively an admission that something is so off in the world, something that's so completely bizarre, that that thing would be produced. That was some sort of internal conflict. I don't know whether it was between the Queen and her son, or the intelligence services, or I don't know what. But it was, it was sort of the sense that you have like almost a hostage video where the person be, has to behave so bizarrely as to send a message. And the message I got is, I'm going to lie, I'm going to fabricate, I'm going to say preposterous things in an effort to just put this to bed in the worst possible way. Like you want, you now all know never to ask me questions about this because I'm simply going to say the most outrageous and insane things that I can possibly think of. I mean, as I said, I, it, it didn't twig at the beginning. It, it sounded like a terrible idea. But then I guess I rationalized it by thinking, He's clearly got no self-awareness. Maybe he did think that he could clear his name. Nobody's that dumb, David. Those questions were entirely expected. And the answers, if, if you look at the amount of twinkle in the eye, I mean, he's clearly not a happy man. But he's saying absolutely ludicrous and preposterous things. I think that the effect is exactly the reverse. If I had to speculate, and I really don't want to, I would say that 
this this interview was given because an amount of pressure was put on a human being who decided that his life was effectively over in most senses. And this is the way he chose to go out, effectively making fun of the entire process. Yeah, but what's really interesting is I'm, I'm sort of aware, for example, the Royal Television Society Awards were two nights ago, the Journalism Awards, and the Prince Andrew interview won Scoop of the Year and Interview of the Year. So it's kind of been rationalized. And I've, and I've seen people talk about how they got the interview. They, the Newsnight producer was trying hard and was on Buckingham Palace, like, which is kind of ludicrous. The idea that it was just the, the um, dedication of the journalist keep continuing to ask for an interview that made Prince Andrew say, OK, you've asked me so many times. I mean, that in itself is kind of a ludicrous narrative. But it is a narrative that, that the mainstream, I've seen the mainstream media kind of... Um, integrate that whole thing into, wow, this is an amazing scoop. You were dedicated and you got the story, which is, which is kind of ludicrous. The idea that, um, so you see what I'm, what I'm saying? I really don't. I mean, I'm so, I'm so... What I'm saying is that it's already been rationalized within the mainstream media. The reason that that interview happened was because they were so dedicated and they pursued Prince Andrew and they asked Buckingham Palace and eventually they, they conceded and Surely they gave the interview, have, which is kind of ludicrous. I'm saying it's ludicrous. Well, it is ludicrous, yeah. but I guess, I mean, my expectation is, is that even if uh, the UK is no longer the world power it once was, I, I presume you still have adults with IQs over 70. How could you possibly rationalize such a thing? I mean, we used to turn to you guys uh, for intelligence and sophistication. This seems the height of folly. If I had to say this is much closer to a hostage video where the hostage is attempting to send a message that is clearly not the ostensible message on video. The really difficult part of the story, David, is, is that almost certainly we're talking about some kind of operation that was being run with knowledge of governments that may have involved pedophilia and was not shut down. And what I can't understand is um, what is it that is keeping some reporter from simply asking the questions that are on everybody's mind. Was this person connected to the intelligence services? Where was Ghislaine Maxwell's passport last seen? Why are we not talking to Les Wexner? Where are the trading records? What is the source of the fortune? It seems to me very clear that we have a missing fortune of Robert Maxwell and an unexplained fortune of Jeffrey Epstein. Are those the same fortune? Who's asking these questions? Did everybody go to sleep when they taught journalism in school? I just don't understand. I guess my sort of disconnect as well is this sense of, I worked in Channel 4 News, they had an investigative unit. These were the kind of bread and butter questions. They pushed really hard, for example, on the phone hacking scandal in the UK, the, the Murdoch Papers phone hacking scandal that also involved networks of power, it involved uh, shady deals, it involved corruption, and they, they pursued that quite intensely. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling this sense of dislocation because I agree with you, there are these questions that are not being asked and I find it difficult to understand why that is knowing that there are, knowing the, the public interest and, know, and knowing the, the, that these questions have been asked in the past. Let me tell you what happened. People started asking those questions and they stopped. And that's what idea suppression is all about. We don't have the resources to pursue that right now. Well, actually, I'm concerned that this is starting to reek of conspiracy theory. Uh, I think given the delicacies of the situation, I'm going to need a lot more evidence before I give this thing the go-ahead. These are the sorts of things that you say when you're trying to shut down a line of inquiry. And my guess is, is that whatever the story is, it represents some very powerful structure that we tripped over. And I tripped over that structure in 2002. And I was convinced at the time before there was any knowledge about this Florida situation um, that this was constructed. I mean, we have a very famous case of a guy named Ellie Cohn who was fitted with a backstory and became a playboy uh, in Damascus and held orgies, if I understand correctly, where he collected information and leverage against people in the Syrian government. If you take that situation, this looks remarkably similar. We've got a guy who was apparently a math teacher at a private high school, and the next thing we know, uh, he's avoided jail in some sort of financial scandal, 
And he suddenly set up as a mystery financier um, with connections to absolutely everyone in the top echelons of power. Something doesn't smell right about the story, given that nobody appears to have ever traded currencies with a guy who was apparently moving billions as a currency trader.